So I just got a brand new microphone, the Shure SM7B, and I'm excited about it. So I'm going to record something with it. Uh, and I've been wanting to record this video anyway. So uh, as I wanted to do actually a different one, but I feel like this one's important to do first because if I don't do this one, then the other one's not going to make sense. Um, you know, so we're, we're going to be talking about sin. Uh, originally, also, I, I keep changing my plans for this specific video. Um, it was going to be about a specific sin, but now I think it would be more appropriate to do sin in general for, you know, whatever reason. Um, anyway, there, there, are, there are a lot of sins that shouldn't be sins. Uh, you know, there are a bunch of weird Levitical laws, like, for instance, uh, wearing a cloth made of two different fibers, or planting more than one kind of seed in a field. And those have uh, historical reasons, right, and cultural reasons. So it's not like they shouldn't be sins at all, <clears throat> or it doesn't make sense that they're in the Bible at all. It's just some weird thing that some ancient people said because control or whatever. That's not exactly what happened. For instance, with the fiber thing, and don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure it was because that kind of fiber ripped easier back then, uh, and, you know, they were constantly out in the elements. They didn't have, you know, factory weaving and all that and it was just like worse in general uh, especially for that time uh, with the different seeds thing you know different crops take different ways of harvesting and it would just make harvesting harder again don't quote me on this but I'm, I'm pretty sure that's why they have these Levitical laws um, and then plus you know Christians today uh, especially you know evangelicals that was a, the group that I was a part of I would say this you know those laws don't apply to us anymore because Jesus came and broke the old covenant and all that. So, you know, that doesn't really matter anymore to talk about to say why they're dumb. What is dumb uh, are a lot of the newer ones, right? Uh, I think the biggest one that makes no sense uh, in general actually are the sexual sins. Like, why does God care what you do with your genitals? <laughs> um... Especially, you know, something like circumcision. Technically, that's been abolished, quote-unquote, by evangelicals. Um, or that's what evangelicals say anyway. That's what I believe. There's no actual reason to get circumcised. Um, or, you know, if you're Kellogg, you do it to your kids so that they don't go and have sex too early or something. <laughs> I think Kellogg did that. Again, don't quote me on this. Do, do your own research. That's really important. Don't just take everything I say at face value. I'm pretty sure Kellogg was a pretty dumb guy. Uh, he tried to make cereal. He tried to make a bland cereal to prevent masturbation. That one's a fact. I know that one for sure. <laughs> that, that one's pretty interesting. I should do a video on Kellogg. Um, anyway, you know, I, like lust, why does it matter if you look at someone and think, dang... I want to sex them up all night. Like, does that really matter all that much? I don't think it does. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess adultery makes sense, unless both parties are consenting. Um, and if they're not consenting, you know, that should be an entirely different sin other than adultery. And, you know, if two consenting adults want to get their freak on with two other consenting adults that they just happen to not be married to, go for it, man. As long as you don't, like, get an STD. You know, STDs might actually be the reason for these. Like, if you, uh, if you sex up a bunch of people all night, some of them are probably gonna have STDs, especially back in that time, and they probably thought they were demon possessions, not STDs. Yeah, you know what, those make sense, culturally. They shouldn't apply today. Uh, a lot of people do think they apply today. I don't think they do. I'm pretty sure those have been... Or, well, rather, they do apply today because of the Bible, but they shouldn't, and an all-knowing God should have known that those sicknesses weren't actually demon possessions and were, you know, germs in germ theory. I feel like an all-knowing God would know germ theory and would have been able to tell us people, yo, don't go, don't go sexing all the time because, you know, some people have these things called viruses, um, and those will mess you up, dude, or, you know, STIs, whatever. Uh... But, but again, lust, and other thought crimes for that matter, hate? Why is hate a sin? <sighs> like, I guess technically it's not very healthy to hate someone, uh, but like, 
why does it matter if you do? As long as you don't, you know, act on it with murder or whatever. Um, and when I say, when I say sex crimes in general, sexual crimes in general, obviously I'm not talking about rape. That, that totally makes sense. That should definitely be a sin. And you know, the satanic Bible actually lists rape specifically as a sin. The Bible does not. <laughs> uh, if they're, in fact, if they're your slave, I'm pretty sure, actually I might be remembering that wrong. Never mind. I think I'm remembering that wrong. Um, but I know that uh, Abraham had sex with this slave whilst married to Sarah because Sarah was like, no, you're going to have a kid. God said you're going to have a kid. God said you and I are going to have a kid, but go have a kid with your slave instead because I'm infertile or something. Uh, the Bible's weird. And then the infertile mother... Mother? The infertile woman gave birth. So I guess she was an infertile mother, except she wasn't infertile because she was a mother. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, a, a big sin that I want to talk about that shouldn't be a sin, homosexuality. This one, why does God care? <laughs> right? Why does God care the the, the sex um, of your romantic partner? Like, I guess it's control, and if I had to take an actual guess as to why they said homosexuality was a sin, I would assume it was to take a jab at the Romans, because the Romans were super into that homosexuality thing. They were super into, like, sex in general. The Romans were, like, really into that. <laughs> um, they... I think it was the Romans. I know the Greeks were, too, but I'm pretty sure the Romans were also into, like, some, some wacky stuff. Um, I don't remember if it was a Greek emperor or a Roman emperor, but one of them... He would, like, just have sex with everyone. He was real chill about it, too. Um, he probably had a lot of STDs because, you know, the time period they were in, they didn't know what was going on. They didn't know what protection was. But, like, you know, he had a good time. Good for him. Uh, but especially nowadays, like, that doesn't make sense as a sin. Um, like, yeah, God made a man and a woman, but not because man and man or woman and woman shouldn't be a thing. It's because they needed to be a man and woman for them to, you know, populate the earth. That's kind of a requirement. <laughs> and there were only two of them at the time. So saying that God made Adam and Eve man and woman so that they were... Or so that they would be... What's the word I'm looking for? So that they could populate the earth uh, isn't really an argument for why homosexuality is a sin. And even outside of that, now there's more than one man and one woman and we really don't need to worry about populating anymore because there's a big population in fact some would argue way too big considering there's almost eight billion people in the world and that's rising very quickly um and again why does god care <laughs> you know <laughs> uh, i i just there's not really a point for homosexuality to be a sin, especially when it's a genetic thing, or not, is it? Gen genetics not the word I'm looking for. Yes, it is. It's a genetic genetic thing. You can't control uh, your sexual impulses like that. You can't control being uh, homosexual. That's just like, that's not something you get a choice in. Uh, and if you do think it's a choice, chances are you're not entirely straight either. I learned that uh, a long time after I Actually, I went to... I forgot what the what the, the thing was. I think it was OPC or OCP. I don't remember. OYCP. Oregon Youth Church something project. I don't know. Anyway, it was a, it was a youth group thing. And we went to this... Uh, went to this church thing and and the, this preacher was like there was this there was this gay guy. I don't think he said gay. I think he actually said homosexual because he was trying to be respectful. There was this, there was this homosexual guy uh, who... Who, who was a Christian, and he, I can't remember exactly, but he, he basically said that he got a wife and kids because, you know, that's what God would want to not be with a dude because God cares. Um, saying that he made a choice, and if you're struggling with that, then you can make a choice too because everyone thinks exactly the same, I guess. <laughs> uh, and it, first of all, it's very dangerous. Some people can't make that choice. Chances are that guy, that gay, that wait, hold on. I said I said guy. I thought I said gay. Then I said gay because I thought that was guy, because I was trying to say guy who was gay. I that guy who was gay was probably actually bi. If he could 
you know, to f get sexually aroused by a woman, that means you're not gay, my guy. <laughs> These are hard things to say. Don't worry about me. I'm shift I don't have a boom arm right now. I just bought one. So I had to, that, those wrestling noises were from my hands against the microphone. Um, it's not a choice is what I'm getting at. And I, I believe for a long time that it wasn't a choice, but it was a choice to not act on it, which which is technically true. It is a choice to not act on most sins, except for lust. You don't get to really choose whether or not you find someone attractive. So lust being a sin is kind of gross. Um, anyway. Oh, and, and plus it's very unhealthy to not, like, masturbate, you know? Like, you know, increased risk of prostate cancer in men. Um... And it, it can, like, prevent you from being, uh, what's the word, fertile and all that. I don't know how it works for women. I haven't really looked into that very much. But I do know that it's actually really unhealthy for men to not lust at least a little bit. Um, anyway, I, I always thought that homosexuality wasn't a choice. Not always, but for a while I thought homosexuality wasn't a choice. But that it was a choice to act on it. And it was a sin that you are born into because you are born into sin. Um, and that you needed to ask God to get rid of it for you or to like help you o overcome it just like all sins I guess uh, and that's that's a bit healthier of a thought but it's still not a good thought to have <laughs> thinking that homosexuality is, is bad in any way especially because God could just like not make you homosexual and all that <laughs> Like, it's God's fault at that point, is it not, for making you a specific way that you can't really control? I, I, I feel like God punishing you for acting on something that he makes you with the urge to do is, is like, something that shouldn't happen. Um, and then there are, there are other minor things, like, uh, well, the sexual sins were really the main ones that gave me problems that, because they shouldn't be sins. Um, not believing being a sin is really dumb. <laughs> I, if, if, if God... Okay, let me... How do I put this? If God sends me to hell for not for the sin of not believing, then that God didn't deserve worship in the first place. However, if I did think that there was a decent chance of God being real, I would still praise him because I honestly don't think eternal torture is worth a little bit of honor. <laughs> Uh, I would totally subscribe to Pascal's Wager if, and if you don't know, Pascal's Wager is a dumb philosophical argument. If, um, it's, it's, it's better to believe in God because if God is real and you don't believe, you waste eternity. But if God isn't real, then you waste, you know, your lifetime. But that's, first of all, if God isn't real, your lifetime is your eternity. But also, that's assuming that there's only one possible God, <laughs> right? So there's a Christian God, but like, that's, it's a false dichotomy. So it's either God exists or God doesn't exist. But it's also either the Christian God exists or the Christian God doesn't exist. Which I mean, I guess is technically true. But then there are also all the other religions that could have potential gods. Anyway, I would probably subscribe to that if I was, or if the Christian God was the only one that had a feasible chance of existing, which it doesn't. There's, there's genuinely no way in my eyes that the Christian God could possibly exist, even with all of the, you know, quote-unquote spiritual experiences I've had. Um, so, you know, I don't really care about what the Bible says is a sin anymore. I've kind of just gone my own way, and I'm having a lot better of a time. I think if you're a Christian, you should not be a Christian. I mean, obviously, I'm talking about why you shouldn't be a Christian right now. Because um, I genuinely think you'll be happier. It might take a little bit to overcome the initial, you know, um, push down of, like, losing everything you had, like, your entire purpose for living. Because I went through that. Uh, I thought, wow, there's no way God can be real anymore. I, I have lost my faith but by extension, I've lost everything I've ever believed in. I have no one to sing to. I have nothing to live for at this point. Um, and I had to shift my mindset from I'm living for eternity to I'm living to be happy right now. And that's all that I can hope to live for. Um, and, and at first, it's a depressing thought. But the more you go, the more you realize, hey, I'm having a good time now. And that's all that really matters, right? It doesn't matter if 
this all ends one day because right now I'm making a purpose for my life and I'm happy with it. And if I die happy, then I'm happy, and that's all that really matters, because if there's nothing after death, then it doesn't matter that I won't be happy in that moment, because I also won't be sad, I won't know it exists. For instance, do you remember before you were born? No, that's what death is, right? There's nothing there. Um, but it's not an eternal nothing, it's just nothing. There's no time in it, so it's not, you know, thousands of years until you're reincarnated or whatever. It's just not... It's really hard to wrap your head around, but that's just kind of what it is, you know? And I was scared of it for a while. I'm not anymore. I've just come to accept it. Uh, and, in fact, kind of relish it, because eternity is terrifying. Even if it's an eternity with the all-loving God that I was taught existed, um, that's just a scary thing. <laughs> like, I, I know multiple Christians, including myself, who at one point asked God if they could just not exist, uh, if they could just die and not spend eternity with God, because, you know, eternity is a long time. <laughs> and even if it, if you're constantly experiencing complete euphoria, that would be, to some extent, torture, you know? Psychological torture, if nothing else. Uh, that, I mean, eternity is a scary thought, and now that I'm... Now that I'm no longer Christian, you know, I think I would, I, I definitely prefer not spending eternity with God. I prefer just dying and that being the end of it, because that way I can actually give purpose to my life rather than, ah, oh, it's fine, I'll be here for eternity, and just, you know, push it off. And, uh, I think, I think it's really important to come to grips with that. I think it's really important, especially for deconverts, uh, new deconverts, it's really important to realize that you can make purpose in your life for yourself it doesn't have to be for an alternate purpose it can just be in the moment you know it's it's important to live in the moment and to not you know just let your life go to waste and it's never too late to make a change it doesn't matter how minor the change is at that point at least you've given purpose to your life right i'm sure you could have given more purpose but so can everyone everyone can be better that doesn't mean that you need to be better to enjoy your life. I've just turned into a philosopher, you know. <laughs> Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, anyway, next one is going to be about hell. Uh, I kind of went into that a little bit. I dabbled. But it's going to be a complete recap of hell. Uh, my fear of hell as a non-Christian. And um, that... that that fear mindset that is instilled into you from when you're first Christian uh, all the way through your Christian walk, you know. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed the better audio quality. I love this microphone. It's so good compared to my other one. Plus, I actually got an audio interface. So I spent like $500 on audio equipment and then I just bought a $100 boom arm because this crappy $15 one, first of all, it doesn't have the right mount. But also, it can't hold my microphone. It takes like a pound to move it around, and my microphone's two pounds, <laughs> two and a half pounds. So, uh, I love you all. Thanks for watching. Uh, I don't know how to end this. <laughs>